Hey everyone, Sachi here. Today we're going to look at the second lesson of the reading practice. This is about inferring the logical conclusion from a reading selection. So as usual, here are the learning objectives. So first, you need to be able to infer to decide about the topic based on the information provided. So what is uh, inference? It's a conclusion reached based on evidence provided in the reading selection and also using your own logic and reasoning. So that's uh, inference. Um, and second, you need to identify keywords justifying the events selected. Um, so you uh, need to be able to kind of use uh, keywords or phrases um, like those that signify sequence or uh, chronology or descriptive or the words or phrases that convey certain value judgments or opinions from the author. So um, the ability to identify those key terms and make inference is also important for this lesson. And last, you need to be able to assemble events identified and associated with inferred information to draw a conclusion. So based on all the evidence um, provided and also your own reasoning, you need to be able to draw a conclusion on what the reading selection is about or what the author's opinion is um, on certain events. All right, so here are some of the kind of common forms of questions that you may see. And again, these are just examples, right? You might not see exactly the same thing on the test. So first, based on the information given in the passage, when or who or how could something happen uh, specific to a, an action or something related to the topic of the passage? And second, which of the following phrases helps the reader understand the order of events in the passage? So this requires you to be familiar with the keywords or phrases that signify order, right? So what happens first and then what happens next as a result or, you know, as a consequence. Next, using key terms infer. So this has your ability to infer, right, using logic reasoning based on what's given in the passage. So this paragraph um, is from a uh, published a journal article from a nursing journal. Um, and I found it pretty kind of interesting. And I made a question based on the information given in this paragraph. So again, I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video so that you can answer the questions. There are two questions on this slide and two more on the next slide. So again, maybe scan through the question first before you start reading the paragraph. All right. Okay, you can pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you didn't have too much trouble um, finding the correct answers for these questions. Now I have to admit that this paragraph has this kind of uh, very formal writing, right? Because it's published as a journal article. And some of the answer choices I gave you can be kind of confusing that these answer choices by themselves are correct, but they're not the correct answers for the particular question. All right, so let's go over those questions. Number one, use key terms infer why consequences such as death and higher healthcare costs may occur related to pain evaluation. So hopefully you have um, figured out what the passage is about, right? So this whole thing is about pain assessment. So what they're saying is that, first of all, pain is very subjective, right? Only the patients can accurately kind of feel uh, what the pain is like, right? And how severe it is. Now for certain patients, this is where the problem comes in. Um, certain patients like critical, critically ill patients or those who cannot communicate, such as the patients that are mechanically ventilated, um, those patients cannot really communicate with healthcare professionals, you know, how much pain they're feeling and what kind of pain they're experiencing. So this creates a challenge where it's very hard to kind of estimate the pain, right, resulting from these conditions. Uh, altern alteration of consciousness, or if someone is sedated, um, some invasive procedures, or someone is on uh, mechanical ventilation and can't really speak. So this is the problem. Now, what this problem could cause is that normally, 
pain is kind of indication of some underlying health condition, right? So if the pain is not communicated effectively with healthcare professionals, then that pain might not get um, treated. And the undertreated pain often result in more severe complications, right? Such as respiratory and cardiac function. So this could often lead to morbidity, mortality, and, and increasing healthcare costs and a longer hospital stay. So you can see the direct cause for what the question is asking for is really the undertreated pain causing complications. And these complications can uh, lead to more severe health conditions, health problems. Uh, this will increase healthcare costs and again, longer hospital stays. Let's look at the answer choices. Um, a, as pain is subjective, only patients themselves can assess pain they experience. That is correct. Some patients are reluctant to communicate with healthcare professionals to get treatment. Now, the second part is not right because it's not that patients do not want to communicate about the pain they experience. It's really that uh, under certain conditions, they can't really communicate with other people about the pain. So A is not correct. B, healthcare professionals have to treat all pain reported, which leads to higher healthcare costs. That's not correct either. This paragraph is about um, uncommunicated pain and undertreated pain, right? It's not because the, the medical professionals have to treat all pain and that increases healthcare. It's a totally different topic. C, pain not communicated by patients is indications of underlying health conditions. And if they're untreated, leads to more severe problems. So that's correct. D, system, uh, systemically assessing patient pain uses more resources and thus increases the healthcare costs. At this point, you know that that's not correct. Question two, which of the following points can be inferred from the passage? So this is about inference. This is, you have, this is where you have to understand the paragraph and use your reasoning to figure out the correct answer. A, Pain management contributes little to healthcare quality. That's not true, right? If you read the, the last pair, uh, the last sentence, you see pain assessment systemically improves patients' outcomes and, and reduces duration of mechanical ventilator support and length of hospital stay. So pain assessment actually improves patients' outcomes and reduces um, the cost associated with the healthcare. B is not correct. C, improved pay, pain assessment leads to better care and longer hospital stay. Now, the first part is correct, but it should be shorter hospital stay. D, many conditions could compromise assessment pain and thus better pain assessment is needed. So that's the correct answer. Question three, what conclusions do the authors draw? So let's go over the answers. A, pain is subjective and only patients themselves can accurately assess their pain. This statement is correct, but it's not the conclusion, right? It's just one of the facts that the authors use to get to the conclusion. So A is not correct. B, pain cannot be assessed accurately in certain patients who are incapable of self-reporting. The statement is correct, but again, it's not the conclusion. It's just one of the supporting details or supporting statements that the authors uh, use to get to the conclusion. C, pain assessment has been improved but may still cause undesired outcomes leading to complications in respiratory and cardiac functions. And it sounds like the, it could be the, one of the conclusions. We can um, put a, a check mark on that and we'll come back. This is kind of where things can get a little bit tricky. Last one, pain assessment and overcome the current issues in pain assessment and improve a patient treatment outcome. Correct answer is actually D because that's the conclusion, right? Uh, that's reached at the very end of the paragraph. So you can see um, the last sentence, pain assessment improves patient's outcome and uh, you know have some other benefits. 
And C is really, again, a correct statement, but it's one of the facts that the authors used to draw and then support the conclusion, right? The authors were saying that there are still undesired outcomes from current pain management because some patients cannot communicate effectively about their pain. So this leads to complications in respiratory and cardiac function. Right? So this is um, still uh, one of the supporting facts. So the correct answer is D. So what the authors were saying is that pain assessment is going to be a better tool to manage pain in patients and improve patient outcomes. Right? So correct answer is D. And also about C, um, there's not much mentioning of pain assessment has been improved, right? The, the, the whole paragraph um, is basically saying that we need to find a better tools, right? Like pain assessment. Number four, adopting pain assessment tools would be beneficial to what kind of a patient? So based on the information given, you can probably guess the pain assessment tools are going to be very helpful to patients who cannot self-report the pain. So B is correct, right? Patients who are on a mechanical ventilator. So you can see the information right here. Now A, who recently had a concussion from a sports event, first of all, is not mentioned in the paragraph, right? And the second, a lot of times the concussions are not severe. You know, people can still communicate. They C, patients who are terminally ill. So you need to know that this is not the same as critically ill. Patient, uh, the terminal ill just means the patients are probably going to die, right? May, they may have cancer um, late stage, right? They're terminally ill, but they can still communicate clearly with uh, healthcare professionals. Last one, patients who have respiratory diseases such as COPD, that's not it, right? So these patients can still communicate pretty effectively. So correct answer is B. All right, so here is the article where I got the paragraph and made the questions. Um, so again, let me know if the video is helpful by subscribing, liking the videos, um, commenting. Uh, I, I like to read your comments. It's, it's really encouraging. And feel free to share the video if you think it will uh, be helpful to others. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you next time.